Well, Gaffer, it's Checker Trade Trophy tie action on Wednesday evening with a trip to Stamford Bridge. And in isolation, a trip to Stamford Bridge is something that the players should relish. It's worth going there just for the tour, just to have a look around the stadium and the trophy cabinet and, and uh, some of the history of, of a fantastic football club. But the, the players, it's um, I think not many, if any, who have played on that, that stadium. So it'll be nice to go there. And more importantly, we're there to, to try and win a cup tie against what will be a, a talented group. How do you prepare for a Checker Trade Trophy tie against an under-21 opposition? I know you've done it previously with, with sides that have come here, but because they're such a, a well-renowned academy side, you know you're going to expect quality regardless of whether you know the household names. And they're at this stage of the tournament because they've gone through the group stages quite very, very comfortably, haven't they? And um, so they've um, they've got the right to play us. They'll be looking forward to it. Listen, they'll be talented all over the pitch. They'll be technical, they'll be strong, they'll be physical. They'll have all the attributes of a of young players who are probably all capable of going and playing in the championship, if not top end, the League One, every one of them. So there, there stands our task, but we'll, we'll go there, we're in good shape, um, we'll freshen things up and we'll try and win a football match. Yeah, because when we spoke to you ahead of the Exeter game, you spoke about the fans that made that long journey down in terms of your team selection on that particular night. How do you address it when it comes to a side like Chelsea and in terms of your team selection, bearing in mind what you've gone through over the festive period in terms of the amount of games you played? Well, a lot of games, a lot of travelling, um, but you know the boys are feeling fresh. They've been they've been good in the last two days. Um, we've kept them nice and fresh today, um, so it'll be a it'll be a test. We'll make some changes. You know, one or two of the new ones might start. One or two of the old ones might go out. One or two of the older ones might come back in. So, it'll be a, it'll be a different team from what played at the weekend. And um, but it's a, it's another game. It's a game that we're looking to to win to make progress in in the tournament. And um, but then we can focus on Rochdale. But we we have to deal with this first. Yeah, of course, Lafferty and White only had well, had probably. 60 minutes, 70 minute training session ahead of that game with Middlesbrough. You've had a couple more days to get them attuned to where you're looking at, and, and I guess they responded quite well with that. Yeah, they have. You know, both are very tired after the game. You know, Ben White stepping up to League One for his for his first ever time. Danny had not much had much competitive action. Ben obviously can't play in the tournament. Played against us and others in the in the group stages. We're not sure whether Daniel's um, going to be a hundred percent return to good physical condition to play. If not, he's fine for Saturday. Um, if, if he's feeling bright and breezy when we get down to West London, then he'll be involved. You had a reserve game on Monday as well, which is another good opportunity for those that are on the periphery to get match time, but also for them to to show you they're still there and, and willing to be selected. Yeah, some good performances. The best on the pit, the best player on the pitch for me was Carl Dempsey, officially known as a trialist by you. Um, but Carl was Carl was the best player on the pitch. I think both camps acknowledged that. I think he was outstanding, stunning for seventy minutes. Uh, ably assisted by Cookie and Tyler Denton, and um, so there was there was some. Real good performances, and obviously in the second half when MK came back into it, of course we made we've got three youth team players on the pitch, but it's you know one or two lot where I said you know what though they're they're learning the good kids and they're a big part of our future, so we're so we're with them every step of the way. I know the Fleetwood fans were up in arms about Carl Dempsey being allowed to leave Fleetwood, and he gives you something that you probably haven't got in the building. Is that fair to say? Yeah, first come across Carl when he was at Huddersfield, of course he was telling me in a talks with him that his last game for Huddersfield was against Leeds United when I was head coach there and we went there and won 3-0 so I probably and he, he went off and loan uh, he's a talented boy he's a good player he was absolutely the best player at Fleetwood in driving him into the playoffs last year um, he's been unfortunate this year he, he didn't quite fit and Joey Barton's plans but I get that as a manager no no issues there we, we Fleetwood of course it's two again we think but he's got a point to prove and he's he's got to come here and be better than what we have to get in the team because we've also got some good players here. I think Woodyard, Reedy, Bahara, they've, they've all been good for us in there. Yeah, he's got good experience for someone so young. He's only 23, but he's played over 100 league games. And I, I guess when you're looking at signings, you want someone who knows the league and knows the EFL and what to expect. He's a talented boy. I think there's all mixes. If you Even young Ben come in, who's, who's people say the way he's an obviously He had 60 games or something at, at Newport and a wonderful cup run as well, like when they drew and played against Tottenham twice. So from our point of view, it's about all mixes. But but Cal Dempsey's a man that we, young man that we think highly of. We think he can help us. And that's what's important. We've we said we were going to go and try and help the group, and and that's what her signings in the last week or so have done. We've we've tried to help them with Danny signing, with Ben signing, obviously um, the Fleetwood boy and and the Cardiff youngster in the in the club now. And that Cardiff youngster has uh, obviously 
put pen to paper on a loan deal into the end of the season and I guess you know what to expect from Lee and it's about getting him up to speed and, and ready to, to play yeah I know what to expect from him I've, I've, someone's put an egg on my chair today I broke an egg on my chair so I'm wondering who that is that he's just in the building listen we love Tomo as a supporter when I support the club then I loved him here as a player but we need to get him a little bit sharp a little bit fitter and I don't mean general fitness a little bit fitness a little bit more ball work it's a long time since he's played competitive football um, but we look we look forward to working with him he's a fantastic signing a big gratitude goes to our chairman and, and Randy and Jason for getting over the line and huge thanks to Barry who who was like that little bulldog who never gave up on it and, and of course to my good friend Neil Warnock thank you for your, for your help and the people at Cardiff City What's all the supporters are going to be excited about seeing Lee do you have to temper that enthusiasm just a little bit in terms of he's only just obviously put pen to paper it's going to take as you say a couple of weeks to get to, to league, league speed in terms of fitness oh absolutely you know no one loves a more than our chairman and our chairman's already at Stamford Bridge sitting in the seat waiting for the Lee Tomlin on the team sheet <laughs> yeah come on chairman but um, he loves him for the reasons that we all love him he's a very talented player um, but we're blessed with talented players you know, aren't we with Dumbelli and Madison and Tony and Godin and I could, I could keep going we're, we're, we've got a real talented group and you know for the last three four weeks we, we've spoken long and hard to Lee I've had many a one-on-ones with him and another one today he's a, he's a fantastic kid that wants to put some issues outside of football away behind him and, and focus when he when he drives to work to, to getting on the bo- pitch and getting on the ball and playing football and it's great to see the kid smiling again Another man who's had a smile on his face for the last week or so is Marcus Madison, a new father, of course. Actually, timed quite well, didn't it, with the fact he couldn't play at the weekend? But he's back in your thinking, I'm guessing, for, Tuesday, for Wednesday night. Yeah, he's back in our thoughts. You know, Marcus had a few days off for paternity to go and spend it with his, with his young baby. And, uh, and of course, we all, I think, led by our chairman, said we, we wish Marcus good luck. And that every day someone's a father, it's, it's a blessing from, from God above that he gives us that opportunity to to bring sons and daughters into this world so but Marcus is back in today well he's been back in Saturday and Sunday and Monday and looking bright and trained particularly well today so Marcus is a top player Anybody else causing you any concern in terms of the injury room? No we, ju- we just got one or two that we're, that we're making sure are, are 100% right young Ben would, would be fine but he was a little bit tired still today um, I said Danny Lafferty was was still a bit tired today, but when they've not played at that level and that bit for a, for a while, it's it's fine. And and of course, after this week, we go to one game a week till the end of the month, and then they'll all be up to speed. So uh, the ones we've got in the in the club and we've had for a period of time, they're incredibly fit. We are the we are if not the fittest, we are one of the fittest in the league. And just finally, now Barry's got to get a few out the door. I guess it's down to him to make some calls. Well, it's up to both of us, really. Barry obviously decides whether people ultimately financially leave the football club or stay, um, and recommends that to be endorsed by our chairman. But as a, as a manager, you you ask your board to support you in bringing your bodies in, but you have to give your commitment to to helping at the other end. I've never been short of that. You know, I've I've never been shy to any football club. You you have to balance the numbers and and help the board balance the books. That's been a manager. And not and not just being some of the young and naive.